your unending grace for someone like me. Father, we pray that through this time, we would raise a bartizan, a spiritual bartizan, a spiritual home of prayer that becomes strength, healing, and rest for us in our college campuses. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Didn't have a, uh, this marker. Uh, everyone, today we are going to continue our <clears throat> fifth gospel letter meeting discipleship training uh, message. And that message was all about the assurance of salvation, or my assurance of salvation. And ultimately, it's that it's what? It is the life, that life of Christ in me, that blessing, the privileges, the blessing, and the lifestyle of a saved child of God. Everyone, this is my assurance of salvation. This is what we enjoy as children of God who have salvation. And we need to restore that every day, every time we receive God's word, every time we have a time of prayer, which should be taking place in my life because we're Christians. And even deeper than that, what the Bible says, we are remnants. And everyone, that word remnant is found throughout the Bible. Isaiah mentioned that word. Paul says that word, that that word is used, that God's remnant must pray. Even today, uh, a young man here, uh, one of our young men, he asked me, what does it mean to be spiritually mature? Everyone, spiritual maturity comes from me focus, centering my life upon prayer and worship. And that builds that spiritual maturity in me that I absolutely need. And it has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with my experiences. It has nothing to do with my own thoughts. It has everything to do with what my heart's desire is. This was a, a topic, a forum we had this morning after our, our worship. Paul's desire is very clear. It's very evident. His desire was what? To do Rome gospelization. That was his desire. His ultimate desire to go all the way to where? All the way to España, to Spain. Because at that time, that was like the end of the earth for them at the time. They didn't know the whole map. So it begs the question, what is my desire? Everyone, what is your desire? Ask that question before God, humbly. What is my desire for my life? Why do I worship God? Why do I pray? Why am I in this room, whether it's Zoom or here in person? Why do I have to hold on to God's word as my covenant? Everyone, what is your desire? What is truly your desire? May you ask that question humbly before God that he might fulfill that question through his living and active word. Because for the things of God, it's absolute. And that's, that's our message for discipleship training, it, what was it? I'm going to write it here. Absolute, absolute, dang it, absolute. Absolute, uh, our first week was what? Absolute sovereignty of God. And then the week before was the absolute plan of God. Then today is the absolute journey uh, covenant, the absolute covenant of God. So what is God's absolute covenant for me? Number one, this is what we might be seeing, what we, what the world sees. What is, what do we see? What does the world see? Meaning, what is the world living in? It's these things. Disasters. This world only knows disaster. Constantly, in every part of the world, there is disasters. It's not reserved for poor nations who are dependent, like third world countries. Everyone, even America, South Korea, 
I don't know where Professor Hui's from, but even that, every country, every part of the world is living in disaster. Confusion. People are confused, they're lost, they're wandering. I, I watched a video of a transgender person giving an interview, a man, and he got surgical whatever to transgender to become a woman. And he was crying, explaining, I regret all of this. I, don't, I wish I didn't do any of this. He's like, I wish I could just be a man. He's like, I consider myself a man. I still consider myself a man. But you know, he, everything's been removed. I don't need to tell you all the details, but he removed everything. And he said, I wish someone would have just hugged me at that time. Everyone, I felt very sorry for this soul. And I hope that person finds healing and redemption and sanctification through Jesus Christ. But everyone, a hug is not gonna solve confusion. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to insult the person or their intelligence, nothing like that. But a hug, will, and I'm sure people did hug that person. But a hug doesn't solve disasters. It doesn't solve confusion. This world is living in a state of surrender. In a state of giving up. There are people, are, people are giving up on their lives. There was a man who worked for... Um, Apple, high executive, he was in a TikTok. You guys know what TikTok is, right? Someone put him on a TikTok where he made a joke, and because of that joke, he got fired by Tim Cook, the CEO of, of Apple, and that man committed suicide because of that. Something Blevins, so, that's his name, something Blevins, he committed suicide. He, he was like almost a billionaire level of money, but he still committed suicide because he just gave up on life. Because for, those, for people of the world, under Satan's control, their desire is to fulfill Satan's will, their father's will, their father's desire. That's what it says in John chapter 8, verse 44. They only long to fulfill the desires of their, of their father, the devil. So everything that you live for, once it's gone, you just, you're given up. When people lose their dreams, when they lose their money, when they lose whatever, a person in their life, they just give up. And people are living like this every single day. And I'm not saying people are evil because of this. My wife actually said something very profound today. My son, we were driving to church and my son said, Dada, he said, is Satan in the heart of bad people? Is the sat bad people heart is Satan? I said, no, I mean, bad people, just because you do bad things doesn't mean Satan is in your heart. Even mommy and daddy, we do bad things. Sometimes you do bad things, but it doesn't mean Satan is in our heart. And then my wife said something very profound and easy for my son to understand. She said, Junior, she said, if we don't have God in our heart, then only Satan is in our heart. And I was like, oh, it's like nice. It's like, good, it's like nice, good job. It made it so simple for him to understand. He's like, oh, if we don't have God, then we have Satan. Remember, when you live like that, this is your life. Nothing is good. Everything is disaster. Even good is disaster. Even bad is disaster. Everything's confusion. You're in a state of giving, of giving up, surrendering. And then people are full of what? Disease. Mental, physical, spiritual. We have a young lady who's associated with our church. She's a friend of one of our remnants here. She's starting her, um, she's becoming a doctor. So she's starting her um, residency things in, in different parts of different campuses and such. And now she's at the psych ward the psychiatric ward, and she's like, oh my gosh, so many people have mental illnesses, like mental problems. And I, and I told our young remnant, I said, go tell her this. Those are only the people that are in there. Eh, there's plenty of people roaming the world right now filled with mental problems. Our neighbors, our coworkers, our friends, our family, everyone has mental problems. There's so many, we can't put everybody in these hospitals. There's not enough room. It's like the really, really, really bad ones that go in there now, but everyone has mental problems. Everyone is suffering mentally, physically, and spiritually. Disease. Do you all know that in a lot of the food we eat, 
there's microplastic in all the food we eat. We can't see it with our eyes, but because we use so much plastic and it's so, it's in like every part of the world, a lot of the food you and I are eating, there's microplastic in the food. Even healthy food, there's plastics in there that we cannot see. It's coming into our bodies, causing disease. That's why it's very important that we engage in deep breathing, everybody. That's something we, can, we practiced when we came to UVA campus um, last year. Uh, our Deacon Dinesh was leading the, the deep breathing meditation. Everyone, it's very important. 80% of your toxins in your body is released through your breath when you breathe out. It's very important to practice deep breathing, especially in this day and age that's just full of disease. Our, our Deacon Dinesh actually said something funny last week. He said, if this is the only time you people are deep breathing, this isn't gonna work. And I, I, I laughed so hard, because <laughs> he's absolutely right. If, this, if we only do deep breathing when we were reminded, because the pastor or a minister said it, and when that's not gonna work, you need to deep breathe every time and connect that with my prayer to make it holy meditation. Number five, this whole world is caught up in what? Conflict everywhere. And ever, I'm not talking about world, con like global conflicts, like war. That's very serious too. I'm talking about even at the smallest level between husband and wife, between mother and father, between parent and child. Just, this world is full of conflict. That's what the world sees, everybody. This is the world's lens of the, this is the people's view, the lens of the world. Everything is disaster, confusion, surrender, disease, and conflict. That's why it's important for us in God's absolute covenant to see what? What God shows us. What is God showing us? Not what we see, not what we're trying to see, not our, uh, our sense of what the world is, but what is it that God is trying to really show us? It's the covenant. God is trying to give us a covenant that completely blocks disaster. Everyone, when you and I hold on to the covenant, what happens is the triune God works upon my life just because I held on to it. Everyone, do you know what's more important than having experiences? What's more than having an experience like electricity going through my body where I feel like I'm on fire? Because I pray, everyone, what's more important than that is simply believing in God's word. It's exceedingly more important to believe in God's word. Because what if you don't have an experience? What if you don't speak in tongues all of a sudden? What if you don't feel like electricity is shooting up your spine? Everyone, you can have that. I'm not saying you can't have that. But what's more important is not what we can see with our eyes. It's what God is giving to us and how God is working invisibly by the Holy Spirit. I mentioned this in our previous uh, uh, chapter 4, Gospel Letter Message. Why is it important that God works invisibly? It's because so that the people of God, if, if we could see everything, even fakes would come. But God specifically makes things invisible so that only the disciples of Christ can truly have faith in the work that God is fulfilling by His Word. That's why it's very important. God is giving us a covenant of what? What is the covenant you and I are holding on to as we have our college mission home? That God will use you and I to do college missions. That's a covenant. That blocks disasters in your home. It blocks disasters in your work, in your campuses, where we live. That's blocking disasters. Everyone, if there's anything in this world that is good, it's because God is doing it through his people. That's it. Because everything the world does is this. <laughs> Even among family and friends, and among partners. But what God does is always good. His covenant for you and I is to block the disasters because we're holding on to the covenant. God fulfills that covenant. So the number two is this. It's the vision that God gives us. The things that people of the world cannot see. They cannot see God's vision. They don't even have the covenant. They cannot see God's vision. But for you and I, we have the vision to help those who are lost, who are confused, everybody. That's why God has given us a vision of what? 
moral gospelization. That's our future. That's what we can hope for. And that's what, our, that's what I said at the beginning before I even started praising. What is my, or I don't know when I said it, but what is our desire? What is my true desire? Is it found within the vision of world gospelization, world gospelization that God will fulfill? Is that truly my desire? Is that what I'm living for? Is that what I eat for? Is that what I pray for? Is that what I work and make money for? Is for God's vision to be fulfilled in my life? May that be your true desire. And when you do, God gives us what? He gives us dream that we can have for 24 hours and we typically equate that dream with what our god-given heavenly talent that dream that god has given to me in the midst of my work in my specialty so what that i can brag about it and be like i'm the number one you know i have a cousin who, who's not a believer and he's like he's an oncologist he's very and he's like he he, he works at anderson hospital in texas he has a very prestigious position. He's like the head oncologist in that entire place. And my aunt loves to brag about it. She's like, he's a, num he's a guy, he's the man. And he's miserable. He's already crashed like five cars like in the past year. He has so much money though, he just buys cars left and right, but he's miserable. He has no direction or purpose, his dream and when that dream, I want to be a doctor and make a lot of money. He is still lost in this. I'm not insulting my family and my cousin. I, I'm trying to save him. I tried calling him over Christmas holiday. He won't answer my phone call. I think he knows I'm going to talk to him about church and God. So he's like, <laughs> he's lost in this. Always fighting with our family. Just confused. Lost in disasters. Constantly crashing these expensive cars. And he buys like expensive cars too. I'm like, Matt, what's wrong? He's like, I don't know. He's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, complete everyone. But God gives us a dream within his covenant, within his vision, my talent, my God-given talent that comes from the throne of God. When we pray holding on to this covenant and vision, then God moves his throne, the power of the universe upon my life so that my heavenly talent would be used for what? Not for those things of my prestige, my gain, my wants, my, bra my bragging rights, not that. But that, that through that dream, we might block these disasters and these curses. People who are lost under Satan's control. Like I said, like my wife said today, right? So simply, if God not in our heart, then it's Satan in our heart. Do we not have a desire to save these people? Then God restores this. God restores the image in my life. Whose image? God's image in my life. In my, for my life, everyone. And there, you know, I really like it how we say it in Korean, but we say 생명, like in my life, like my life, meaning the life found only in Jesus Christ. God's image is restored in my life, in my spirit, and in my lifestyle, meaning in all the aspects of my life, God restores his image there. God's power. And we typically equate this with that term we say 25, meaning what? The 25th hour of God, the power that transcends time and space that mankind cannot fulfill, that only God can fulfill. That power, that life spirit, that lifestyle, that image of God is restored in me as I hold on to the covenant vision and the dream that God has given to me 24 hours in my prayer. So then the last thing is what? That masterpiece, that practice. That eternal masterpiece that is left behind in my country, in my neighborhood, in my work, for our next generation who will do this work after we are gone. And it's eternal. Why? This masterpiece is eternal because it's, the content is this. And everyone, we call this CVDIP, by the way. That's the first letter, CVDIP. Oh, this, so this is practice. So we also call this as practice. Masterpiece is also, because meaning what? We put all of this into practice that produces a masterpiece. So we call this our CVDIP. And I know you all are familiar with this term because 
as we've been going together within God's word, we even have that praise, you know, we used to sing together, like, all of this is every remnant, C-V-D-I-P. That's, this is my, this is the absolute covenant that God has given to us, my C-V-D-I-P. Then the conclusion is this, this is a simple conclusion. That in everything, in all situations, in all meetings, in all circumstances, everything is my all CVDIP answer. No matter who I meet, when I meet them, under what circumstance, what problem, what blessing, everyone, everything is my CVDIP answer. Everything is my covenant. Every person is my covenant. Every person. Through every problem, I see the vision that God has given to me. Through all the good things, conflicts, problems, diseases, I still have that dream God has given to me. In all situations, God's power is being restored in my life, that image, and we're putting all that into practice in everything to create that eternal masterpiece. And everyone, that eternal masterpiece can be something as grand as like Fanny Crosby's hymns, but it can always be that little small thing you do as well for your devotion for your church. You making the PowerPoint slides or the pro presenter slides for the church to worship God, everyone, that's an eternal masterpiece that brings God glory. Everything becomes my all CVDIP answer. And I bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ that the absolute sovereignty plan and covenant of God would be restored in your lives throughout this week and even when we meet together uh, this Saturday for those of us who will meet. Uh, let's pray. Actually, before we pray, Assistant Pastor Grace Park wanted to sing, give this praise one more time. Let's actually.